This is News 8 Now, this morning. You know, our deputies know that every day they put their badge on and every day they go out to serve our community and we don't know what that looks like day to day. Take on water, drink water, um, we monitor them. Um, it depends on the situation. If it's summertime, we may have a fan there for them, um, cooling towels. Because there's a lot of families in need of uh, assistance with the food. Prices of food have gone way up, so more people are a little harder to find uh, money around for the food to the prices they are. So the prices uh, have gone up and so have our numbers for people looking for assistance. Good morning, everyone. That was your morning eye opener. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Tuesday, May 16th, and we have another beautiful day in the forecast. Yesterday, when we had the shot of downtown, yeah. you couldn't even, it was just a gray film. Like, you couldn't yep. see anything, but it's pretty clear out. Yeah, it's looking good outside now, and, uh, you know, off to a pretty comfortable start with temperatures here this morning, too. Uh, we're going to actually uh, continue to warm up as we head into the south. We're now uh, well above average here for this time of the year, as forecast highs are expected to be into the 80s this afternoon. So I'm sure we're all going to appreciate that here later today. But uh, as of right now, only tracking a few clouds out there here currently across the Cooley region. And uh, other than that, uh, conditions are on the quiet side. Nothing on the radar, but again, just a few clouds there on the satellite picture. Current temperatures are into the 40s, 50s, 51 La Crosse now, uh, 49 Viroqua, 47 Prairie du Chien and, and in Basquebel. Uh, Winona is currently checking in at 50, Eau Claire at 51 degrees. So a look at your planner. We're going to be looking at those clear skies continuing throughout the morning. Temperatures warming up into the 70s by 11 o'clock this morning and then up into the upper 70s to low 80s as we head into the afternoon hours with those west northwesterly winds at around 10 miles an hour or so. So a check now on your algae report uh, shows that the birch is low. Oak and uh, the tree pollen in general is high and the same forecast is in store for the day tomorrow as well. You can expect the high oak pollen levels for at least uh, another week here across the area. Uh, stay with us. I'm going to have a check on your school cast a little bit later, plus your full weather forecast as well uh, coming up here a little bit later on in the show. Sophia. Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. No one was injured after multiple fire departments responded to a fire on Mohawk Valley Road. News 8 Now's Dua Ishrar spoke to the chief of the Stoddard Fire Department, who says the flames weren't the only concern for firefighters. It was a uh, fire in the crawl space of the trailer. Fairly difficult thing to get to. Large fires usually require a large group of firefighters to get the job done. They're all great people. They all help us. It's all volunteer fire departments. On days like this, the size of the flames don't matter. Stoddard Virgin Fire Department was uh, uh, dispatched for uh, smoke showing on a trailer house. The response to this fire was fairly quick by multiple agencies, but an additional concern was making sure the ones responding didn't have an emergency of their own. First fire for, for us on these fairly, it's fairly warm summer day. Heat from the flames and heat from the sun can make a dangerous combination. Cardiac issues with firefighters is getting to be, you know, a little bit more of a, a, a known risk. Add in the heavy gear. This is like wearing your snowsuit in the uh, summertime. And the chances of overheating are high. That's why multiple agencies take turns fighting the flames. We do like a, uh, a 30 minute cycle. It may even be less than that. After 30 minutes, each firefighter has their vital signs checked. Take on water, drink water. Um, we monitor them. Um, it depends on the situation. If it's summertime, we may have a fan there for them. Um, cooling towels. Allowing these firefighters to cool down even in the hottest weather. Reporting in Stoddard, the Westrar, News 8 Now. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The Cooley Region community honored those who continue to serve their local communities. Police officers and family members gathered in Holman for presentations and to remember the four Wisconsin officers who have died in the line of duty this year. After Officer Katie Lysing's death during a traffic stop just last week, La Crosse County Sheriff John Siegel says the risk officers take is never knowing what lies ahead on the job. You know, our deputies know that every day they put their badge on and every day they go out to serve our community and we don't know what that looks like day to day. 
Sheriff Siegel says the recent events have slowed recruitment efforts, but the sheriff's office will continue to bring the best recruits they can. Peace. Governor Evers is focusing on Internet access with the state's Public Service Commission. The PSC is developing the state's five year plan to get high speed Internet to more rural and underserved places and make it more affordable. Governor Evers has made moves to invest in broadband access since 2019 and his office says more than 390,000 homes and businesses have received access to Internet or have improved their Internet connection. From parents to small businesses to farmers and healthcare professionals, it's clear that broadband access impacts everyone and the, it's, it's essential for economic development, rural prosperity, community health. The governor proposed an investment of $750 million for the broadband expansion grant program in his biennial budget. The PSC's listening tour will run through June 8th, and there are two virtual listening sessions. We have more details on how to attend on our website. The Second Harvest Food Pantry held a mobile food pantry at Memorial Park in Sparta. The mobile food pantry is held every third Monday of the month. The program is here to help families that can't afford food at the grocery store. David Cooter, a Second Harvest Food Pantry coordinator, says that the need for their pantry has been slowly increasing. Because there's a lot of families in need of uh, assistance with the food. Prices of food have gone way up, so more people are a little harder to find uh, money around for the food to the prices they are. So the prices uh, have gone up and so have our numbers for people looking for assistance. The mobile pantry had enough food to feed 200 families. After nearly two years of construction, the wafer food pantry is open to customers on La Crosse's north side. It's replacing its old location on Causeway Boulevard. News 8 Now's Emily Haugen was there and explains how this helps wafer further its mission to support the community. A day is made up of minutes. Uh, that's what I've been doing for about seven years. And every one of those minutes matters. It's by far the best part of my week. At La Crosse's Wafer Food Pantry, volunteers like Carol Schrader make the most of that time they have. It's met all of my needs and then some. At its new location, they hope to meet everyone's needs in more ways than one. Just because someone is in need of help, food help, doesn't mean that the services that are provided should be less than what we would experience. Volunteers stock shelves. They also guide customers through the pantry letting them inside for the first time since the pandemic began. It's just exciting to get to see how this system really works instead of what we were used to. Executive Director Aaron Waldhart says this is a win for volunteers. It's also a win for the people they serve. A lot of times people that come here, we are their only source of interaction for it in a day. Once those relationships develop, there's discussions about other things than just food. If we're able to offer other resources or referrals or assistance in some way that we're able to lift the whole person up and not just solely focus on the food. Helping our community when it matters most. This new location also pulls Wafer out of the floodplain and into the middle of La Crosse's north side. Leaders say this change allows Wafer staff to focus less on sandbagging on rainy days and more on the people they serve. Prairie Duchesne officials have set a date for a community cleanup for people affected by the Mississippi River flooding. The cleanup will happen tomorrow starting around 9.30 a.m. PDC high school students, staff, volunteers, city and county employees will be on hand to help those who have called 211 for help. If you need help cleaning up and want to get on the list, call 211 so officials can get you on a list. Still ahead on your morning news, Excel Energy may be raising its rates next year to counter rising costs. And we have some tricks and tips for your upcoming Memorial Day travel plans. That and more coming up this morning. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Summer is right around the corner and nothing says summer like barbecue. Today is National Barbecue Day. In the U.S., barbecued meat is thought to have originated in North Carolina. However, there are other areas besides North Carolina that are famous for their barbecue, like Kansas City, Memphis, and Texas. Whichever is your favorite, enjoy some today. 
Gather your friends and family, set up the backyard, and get grilling. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning after the break. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. We're looking at mainly clear skies to start us off here this morning. A live look there from City Chem 8 in downtown La Crosse, confirming that sunshine. <clears throat> 51 degrees under those sunny, sunny conditions. South southwest winds at around 6 miles an hour. Visibility looking nice and clear at 10 miles. Meanwhile, to the north in Eau Claire, also looking clear as well. 51 degrees. South southwest winds light at around uh, 5 miles an hour. So we are watching a few showers and storms across portions of the uh, southern or at least the lower Midwest. So you can see that low pressure system there. Some showers and storms and uh, also a cold front here to our north is forecast to move through uh, to today. And that's going to give us some slightly cooler temperatures here to work with heading into the day tomorrow. But overall, just a few passing clouds here across the local area. With current temperature readings into the 40s and 50s. 49 in Volkfield, 36 degrees now in Sparta. Temperatures in La Crosse as we saw 51. Uh, Baroque was at 49 and Winona currently at 48 degrees. But look at the forecast highs today this afternoon. Rising into the low 80s, forecasting a high of 80 today in Winona, 81 in Sparta this afternoon. 82, one of the warmer spots today in Volkfield. Meanwhile, Basketville also a warm spot here of 83 degrees this afternoon. 55 degrees and sunny here this morning at noon. We're at 76 with plenty of sunshine and at 4 o'clock 82 degrees with sun and mostly sunny skies 73 as we get closer towards that early evening hour. So overall, you could see a pretty clear start this morning. Temperatures in the 60s. However, again, warming up into those upper 70s to low 80s by 2 p.m. this afternoon. A few passing clouds can move through uh, across portions of the area as we head into the late late afternoon to early evening hours and heading into tonight. A few clouds here as well. Otherwise, expect a mostly clear start here to tomorrow morning with temperatures in the 40s and 50s and then warming up into the upper 50s, low 60s by the late morning. Still looking clear before some clouds here move in as we get closer towards that 6 p.m. hour here tomorrow. We're going to be watching this trough of low pressure and associated cold front, though, as we head into Thursday. That system's going to move through to give us a chance of showers and thunder storms here to work with, especially by to, uh, especially by the late Thursday afternoon into the late Thursday evening hour. And then by Friday, that should clear out as high pressure builds off to our west, and that should build across much of the central U.S. and the Midwestern United States. Here comes another reinforcing high pressure system as we head into this weekend, and that's going to help continue to enforce the sunshine here as we head into this weekend. But uh, again, you know, watching for some storm chances here as we head into Thursday. And then uh, as we head into this weekend, we're looking at uh, pretty comfortable readings as highs into the 70s. Highs in the 70s into early next week with a mix of sun and clouds. Lows into the 40s and uh, 50s. This morning, we have Jocelyn Paler with us in studio to talk about the Justice Bus that is in southeastern Minnesota this weekend. Thank you for being here. What is the Justice Bus? Yeah, good morning. The Justice Bus is a mobile legal aid office. Uh, we offer legal information, uh, resources, and referrals for in, uh, to other programs or resources. Um, so it has internet access and it's fully accessible to those who have mobility issues. Um, and so it's a confidential place for individuals to sit down and get some information, uh, uh, legal information, or talk to a legal professional for folks who might not, not otherwise have uh, the opportunity to do that. Is it for anybody? Is it free? Do you have to pay to use it? Yes, so uh, we do not charge. It is free, uh, free legal services to eligible clients. Um, so the office I work for, SMURLS, stands for Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services, and we provide civil legal services to, low, uh, to eligible uh, individuals and families and community groups. Um, our offices serve the 33 southernmost counties in Minnesota, um, and so we have a really large geographic region, and we also, um, our office uh, serves 38% of the population in Minnesota that is at or below the federal poverty guidelines. And so we not only have a large um, geographic area to cover, mm -hmm. we have a large, um, a lot of people to ground to cover in that area as well. Um, How did the Justice, Bar Justice Bus, excuse me, start? Um, so the Justice Bus is part of the Reach Justice Minnesota initiative okay. that was born out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a statewide uh, initiative 
and it's provided these four of these mobile um, mobile law offices or justice buses as we call them um, to different geographic regions of Minnesota. So there's one in northwest Minnesota, one in northeast Minnesota, one in the Twin Cities, and then our office has uh, the one covering the southern part of the state. So it's been running for about two and a half, three years? So we're actually just able to now get it up and running okay. with, um, with staffing and capacity. And just um, now that the pandemic is winding down, we're able to be getting out into communities to really start to reach people um, where they live. Why is this program important? Well, it's really important, as I said, because um, our part of Minnesota has the largest portion per, uh, percentage of people living in at or below the federal poverty level. Um, and so it's important to be able to provide individuals in, in our communities with more access to justice. Um, so a lot of these communities are geographically isolated. Um, a lot of them don't have internet access mm -hmm. or as much broadband capability. Um, and then of course transportation, most, most of these communities don't have uh, public transportation available and many individuals in these communities don't have that. And so this is really an effort for us to be able to get out and serve the clients where they're living um, and so they have more access to this information. Does your location of the buses change every week? And if so, where can people find where the buses are going to be? Yes, so um, this week we're gonna be starting out our tour. Uh, on Tuesday we're gonna be in Rushford, Caledonia, and La Crescent. Okay. On Wednesday we'll be in Wabasha, Plainview, and St. Charles. On Thursday we're heading to Preston, Leroy, and Stewartville. Uh, on Friday, we'll be in Red Wing, Cannon Falls, and Zambroda. And the okay. following week, we're going to be in communities in Austin, Blooming Prairie, Owatonna, Faribault, Kenyon, and Northfield. Wow, so you're going to be in a lot of locations. Yes, and uh, additionally, we're planning to be back in these areas or s nearby communities throughout the summer. Okay, so all throughout the summer months. Yes. And will that continue into the fall? Do you know yet? We're still trying, trying to, to wait and see, but we really just want to get out and get into these communities and mm -hmm. meet people, let them know what we're about, what we can do to help them, um, and, you know, and just be there. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for being here yeah. and for sharing your mission. If you are interested in checking out the Justice Bus, you can check them out on their website. We will be right back after the break. of the high school baseball season. Just a few more chances for these squads to fine tune all the details before the postseason begins and it doesn't get too much better than seeing crosstown rivals go head to head. Let's go to Logan High. Rangers hosting the rival Riverhawks. Pick it up top one. Central strikes first. Drew Wonderling gets the job done. Rangers get the out, but the Riverhawks take a one nothing lead. Top of the second now. Central looking for more, but the Logan D stepping up and it's Johnny Lever making a play the junior. Laying out for the grab, Rangers out of a jam. Let's fast forward to the fifth now. Same score until Bradley Check gets one in. He hits it sharply to second. That'll score a run. We're all tied at one. Later in the inning, Gabe Catchy at the dish. Watch out, this one gets away. Lever racing for the plate, and he's called safe at home. Just beats the tag. Logan jumps out in front two to one, and the Rangers adding some insurance later in the fifth. Lucas Eilertson belts one back up the box. That's a base hit. Kobe Zafrin comes in to score on the RBI single. Rangers get a big win at home over their rivals. They take it three to one. To the softball field we go. MVC showdown in lacrosse. Spartans in town taking on Central. Riverhawks going to work in the second. This ball is scorched to second. That'll get the job done as Santana Carranza scores to put Central on the board later in the inning. Great piece of hitting here. This is going to drop in for a base hit. Grace Blagan scores to make it 2 nothing Riverhawks. Central would load the bases, but the Spartans get out of trouble. Peyton Eilers snags this one. Sparta out of a jam, but the Riverhawks keeping the Spartans off the board. Carmen Peterson dealing. Riverhawks hang on for the win, 5-3. to three. Over to Bangor, the Cardinals with a chance to clinch the Scenic Bluffs title as they take on Brookwood. First inning, two runners on. Tyler Meyer decides to get the scoring start. An RBI single brings in Samuel Kropp. Bangor takes the lead. Next batter, Bryce Anderson is going to add another. He pops one up to deep center field. That's plenty deep enough to score Bryce Peterson. Cardinals go up 2-0. Next inning, a man on for Peterson. He lines one out to center, gets over the head of the defense, all the way to the fence. A run scores, and Bangor is rolling. They'd go on to win it 11-1. They are now 16-1. 
on the year. And they would take their conference trophy, go cheer on the softball team. But with Cashton losing, Brookwood had a chance to clinch a share of the Scenic Bluffs title. Bangor trailing by a couple, but with a runner on, Gabby Schroeder pops one up. That's in no man's land. Drops in for a single, a run scores. Cardinals trail by just two. Brookwood trying to answer back. Kimber Kaiser at the dish. She delivers with a single up the middle. Deanna Wallace scores. Falcons back up three, but here come the Cardinals. Tie game. Jade Robinson crushes this one to center. It skips to the wall. Cardinals are now in front. Falcons still in it, though. Bases loaded for Maggie Muhlenkamp. Pops one out to center. A run comes in to score, and we are going to extra innings. We're now in the ninth. Nora Tucker going to put this game to bed. A single down the third base line means Anna Frank will score. Cardinals walk it off eight to seven. We have a lot of area athletes who go on to play sports at the collegiate level, but it's not too often we have an athlete go out of the country for it. Earlier yesterday, Aquinas senior Barcha Nizdalova signed her national letter of intent to play basketball at Capilano University in Vancouver, Canada. Nizdalova is an exchange student from the Czech Republic. She enrolled at Aquinas in 2021, and now she'll be taking her talents to British Columbia to play at the next level. That's gonna do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Well, good morning, everyone. Skies are looking mostly clear this morning across the Cooley region, as you can see there behind me. Just a few passing clouds here off to our south and east, and we are going to be looking at uh, some pretty clear weather conditions lasting throughout the morning. So if you have dog walking plans, it's looking good. And as we head into this afternoon, still looking sunny. Mostly clear skies will continue into the early evening. All right, so temperatures as you head out the door are mainly into the 40s and 50s. We're seeing 50 degrees currently in areas like Winona, 49 Black River Falls, 51 in Eau Claire, and 49 currently in areas like uh, like Viroqua. Meanwhile, as we get a check on your zone forecast today, you'll notice that our high temperatures will be rising into the low 80s. In fact, Barry Mills today, you're looking at a high of about 82. Uh, same in Bangor this afternoon. Same in Soldiers Grove, really south into Gaze Mills, Steuben, and also into the areas south of that. 81 in Melrose today, 82 today in Trempeleau. Lots of 82s really on the map. And as we head north, upper 70s to low 80s can be said in the Chippewa Valley. So for your school cast this morning, things are starting off on a clear note, 55 degrees plenty of sunshine and clear skies heading into this afternoon on the way back. Uh, lots of sun still temperatures at 80 degrees under sunny skies. I'll have a check on your full weather forecast a little bit later in the show. It's a big step forward for Minnesota State College Southeast. The college's associate of science and nursing program has received recognition from the Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing. That means its nursing program has met the standards for educational quality for nursing education. At the celebration ceremony, the college president said this achievement sets up their graduates for even more professional success. Our RNs are now able to go out and be employed by any healthcare employer. Some only hire ACEN accredited from ACEN accredited programs. So we're very excited for what this means for our students. The Associate of Science and Nursing degree takes five semesters to complete. In Minnesota, the public safety bill has been passed by the House. The public safety bill includes a red flag law and expands background checks to cover private gun sales. Esme Murphy spoke with Minnesotans about the potential changes. It, you know, frankly should have happened a lot sooner. Sammy Rahameen was just 17 in 2012 when his father, Reuven, was one of six people shot and killed at the family's accent signage offices in Minneapolis. It's gratifying to see uh, 10 legislative sessions after my first time testifying at the state capitol uh, to see some real progress being made. Sammy is also the communications director for the Jewish Community Relations Council and works with Jewish groups around the country to prevent gun violence. Jewish Americans experience gun violence both as the targets of anti-Semitic attacks and as everyday citizens in America. Moms Demand Action Minnesota has campaigned for years for gun control measures like the ones being debated. For Molly Loitz, it's been a long but very worthwhile road. I'm, I'm really relieved. It has felt urgent for a long time. 
uh, for our volunteers. We reached out to half a dozen gun shops seeking comment from those who don't support the changes but were turned down. It's not because of people with guns, it's ignorant people with guns. But one gun owner we spoke to outside a Robbinsdale gun range says the proposed laws infringe on his rights. So thinking someone is a threat in the red flat law and they're able to come seize, seize your firearms, I don't think that's fair. Especially, you know, as far as the Second Amendment right, I feel like that's violating my Second Amendment right. Speaker Horton says the votes are there for the bills to pass and Governor Tim Walls, who often describes himself as a proud gun owner who favors gun control measures, has said he will sign them. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. The National Institutes of Health estimate one in five adults live with mental illnesses in the U.S. Health experts say now's a good time to prioritize self-care and take time to recharge. Mandy Gaither has more on three types of self-care and help for your mental well-being. It's often the last thing we think about. Taking care of ourselves, focusing on our mental well-being is a critical part of our overall health. We kind of tack it on at the end of the day or it's just one more thing to do. Um, but self-care is really important. Psychiatrist Jennifer Zumariga with El Camino Health says there are many types of self-care, but she asks her patients to focus on three of them. First, physical. That means getting exercise and an adequate amount of sleep as well as eating right. Research shows that getting regular meals that are balanced and good and even some fun foods, um, you know, enjoying those, that's really very important as well as hydrating. Next is the emotional aspect of self-care. That's being mindful, maybe meditating or doing breathing techniques or journaling. But she says it's also about practicing positivity. I always want to talk about really practicing gratitude and reminding ourselves of the things that we are grateful for that we have in our lives. Finally, the social aspect of mental health. When the world shut down during the pandemic, many became isolated. Zumariga says it's critical to have relationships with others. Really reaching out to family members and friends and um really trying to build those friendships and get support from other people is going to be very important for us um, and our mental health and self-care. The psychiatrist says some of the self-care techniques won't work for everyone. That's why she says it's important to keep trying different ways to take care of yourself, find the ones that work for you, and then stick with those. Here is Derek to tell us what our driving conditions are looking like today. Derek. All right, thanks so much for that, Sophia. We're looking at uh, mainly clear skies to start us off this morning, which is a few passing clouds across portions of the area. And temperatures as you head out the door are mainly into the 50s, 51 in Eau Claire now, 51 as well in La Crosse. A much colder though in Florida, you're currently sitting at 36 degrees. Oak was at 49, and Winona is currently at 50. So overall, the forecast today, very warm with a high of 82 degrees and mostly sunny skies. West-northwest winds at 10 to 15 for tonight. Temperatures dropping to 47. Overall, that's pretty seasonable for this time of the year. Mostly clear skies. Northeast winds light at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Driving conditions uh, very nice here this morning. It's going to continue to remain nice as we head into the lunch hour. Clear skies here for that evening commute hour as well. So all in all, we have green lights well into the forecast there. And the mowing forecast, 61 degrees this morning. Lots of clear skies. Plenty of sunshine between noon and 5 p.m. with temperatures into the 70s. And then the low 80s by around 5 p.m. this afternoon. Now, coming up in a bit, we'll take a look at your full weather forecast. I'll let you know uh, if we have any rain chances potentially on the way later this week. Before we head to break, it's time to look at today's Look Who's 8. That's right. We have one birthday today. It's to Lorna, uh, who's turning 88 today. Now, she loves watching the Packers and spending time with her family. Happy birthday, Lorna. If you know a special someone turning 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. That's right. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for that Submit Pictures button underneath the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We will be right back after the break. 
Well, sir, it's a nice, beautiful start here from City Cam 8 in downtown La Crosse. As you can see behind me there, a crystal clear blue sky temperatures at 51 degrees. And look at that visibility, nice and clear at 10 miles as well. Winds out of the south southwest, very light at around 6 miles an hour. Meanwhile, conditions to the north in Eau Claire, very similar. Lots of sunshine here as well. 51 degrees visibility clear at 10 miles south south southwest winds at around 5 miles an hour. So also light with the wind speed here as well. Meanwhile, we have a front here to the north. We'll watch that system. Not expected to see any significant weather with that, but it will cool us down just a little bit as we head into the day tomorrow. Meanwhile, to the south across the lower Midwest, they are under the influence of showers and thunderstorms associated with a weak uh, trough of low pressure there, as you can see, stamped to the south. Meanwhile, closer to home, we're just looking at a few passing clouds here throughout the morning, and now we are under the influence of clear skies, and that's going to continue here, it looks like, throughout the day. Temperatures are mainly in the 50s. Some spots like Sparta at 36 degrees, Volkfields at 49. So there's a few cold spots, even to the south as well. Viroqua, Basketball, Parade de Chine, all into the mid to upper 40s here currently with forecast highs expected to reach the low 80s this afternoon. So that's a little bit above average here for this time of the year. Let's break down your planner here. 55 degrees to start, uh, 76 by noon today, and then 82 degrees by 4. And then we drop down slightly to 73, mostly sunny skies as we head into the early part of the evening. Skies continue to remain clear here throughout the morning with temperatures well into the 60s. And as we forward into time, by 2 p.m., you can still see things continue to remain clear across the area. Look at those temperatures warming up into the upper 70s to low 80s before a few clouds move in here from the north as we head to 6 p.m. here this evening. And then as we head into Tonight by 11 o'clock, maybe a few passing clouds across portions of the Cooley region. Heading into tomorrow morning, waking up at 5 a.m., looking at temperatures in the 40s and low 50s. However, as we head into the afternoon hours, you'll notice that our temperatures will only warm up into the upper 60s, low 70s. That's from that frontier moving through today, and also the fact that we're going to see some cloud cover causing some shade there. So there were, therefore, our temperatures will not be as warm as today either. Now, looking ahead into Thursday, we're watching this trough of low pressure with an associated frontal boundary. That system is going to be moving through our area here, as you can see, by the time we reach to late Thursday afternoon to the evening. That could cause a chance of seeing showers and thunderstorms before clearing out of here as we head into Friday, as most of the moisture will be well to the east and north of us by that point. As we head into this weekend, a high pressure system will build in across the area, followed by another one moving in as we head into Sunday. So that's going to help reinforce the calm weather, clear, clear skies, sunshine, and help to warm up the temperatures as well this weekend and also into early next week. So a little bit of a brief cool down tomorrow with a chance of showers and storms on Thursday. And then the next cool down here arrives on Friday, followed by that warm up here as we head into this weekend and early next week. This morning we have Michael Quam with us from the Salvation Army. Now Michael is here to tell us more about uh, their party in a park event. So Michael, what can you tell us about this party? It's a free event, uh, community service. So uh, it's Friday, May 19th from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, and again, free to the community, free food, free music, free entertainment. Well, free we love free, food. right? <laughs> yeah. Did I mention free? Yeah. It, so it's going to be this weekend. Yes. Um, why this weekend and have you done it in the past? Yes, so National Salvation Army Week was actually declared back in 1954 by President Eisenhower, always the week immediately following Mother's Day weekend. So in the past we've done community barbecues, little get-togethers, and we thought, hey, 2023, it's a big year, yeah. things are finally cooling down, mm -hmm. why not have a big event? And how long has this been event been going on? This is first year. Oh, this is a very first very year. Very first okay. year, so okay, very lots nice. of excitement. Do you have volunteers? Do you need volunteers? If so, where can people sign up? Yes, we have many volunteers. Um, volunteering opportunities are always available, and I invite people to reach out to us on salacrosse.org, okay. which is our website. Uh, volunteer activities are, are daily, both at the shelter and the thrift store. And you, can you remind of where you're putting this event at? Yes, Riverside Park. Oh, that's a that's a perfect place for perfect. it too. You know, is it hopefully it's supposed to be nice out too. Yeah, it is. And I, you know, speaking of Riverside, is it basically where that pavil pavilion is, where they have yep. the concerts and stuff? Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And that's where the music will be as well. Okay. What is your outcome? What are you hoping the outcome is for this event? Yes, awareness. So both that the Salvation Army is here to help, as well as for the community to know that um, they can volunteer, have good community service. Um, and get together. What is the one thing you're most excited for? I'm excited for a really relaxing evening. <laughs> I'm really excited to watch the kids play and it should be a great time. And there's a big secret uh, grand prize, so can you give us you know, a bit of a clue of what that yes. may be? Well, if you like, let's say, bowling at Playmore, if you like a day at the Children's Museum, 
if you like the La Crosse area YMCA and you enjoy eating at Senor Villa, Ooh, um, that yes. might have something to do with it. Okay. So our, let me reiterate, so you're looking for volunteers or there's always volunteer opportunities? Always volunteer opportunities. What will people be doing? Yes, yeah, so um, many folks from the Salvation Army as well as the volunteers will be serving food. Um, so okay. when folks come down there with their families, um, we'll have meals for them as well as um, little other items in there that um, people are helping out with. And you mentioned you have a website, so that's yep. where people can find information. You got it. If all of this doesn't get people to come out, what else can you say to get them to come to your event? Yeah, I think it's just a, a great opportunity. By the way, it's free. And uh, <laughs> right. for folks to come down. And you said it was free? I can't it, remember. It's free, yes. <laughs> um, and so it's, you know, it's Andy Hughes will be there playing music. Andy's pretty okay. popular in the area as far as uh, a great musician and, uh, and a great partner. And I think when folks see the other people there, so for example, for example, um, Gillette Pepsi donated some product, Quick Trip donated some product amongst others. So there will be all sorts of good stuff. And what time is it? 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. 5 to 8. And is there any information that you want our viewers to know about? Um, bring yourselves, bring your family, and bring a lunch here. Sounds awesome. awesome. Well, thank you very much, Michael. You got if it. Any, and what was the website one more time? SALacrosse.org. Well, there you go. If you want to check out the event, you can find more information on the website. It is this weekend. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you you. We'll be right back after the break. Three Wisconsin energy utilities are asking the state's Public Service Commission to increase rates next year. Excel Energy, Alliant Energy, and Madison Gas and Electric are all saying starting costs for renewable energy projects are making them increase customer rates. According to a company release, Excel says those increases would equal $9.50 more a month for electric and $4.50 more for gas. Governor Evers is focusing on internet access with the state's Public Service Commission. The PSC is developing the state's five-year plan to get high-speed internet to more rural and underserved places and make it more affordable. Governor Evers has made moves to invest in broadband access since 2019 and his office says more than 390,000 homes and businesses have received access to internet or have improved their internet connection. From parents to small businesses to farmers and healthcare professionals, it's clear that broadband access impacts everyone and the, it's, it's essential for economic development, rural prosperity, community health. It's a big step forward for Minnesota State College Southeast. The college's Associate of Science and Nursing program has received recognition from the Exeter, Accreditation Commission excuse me, for Education in nursing. That means its nursing program has met the standards for educational quality for nursing education. At a celebration ceremony, the college president said this achievement sets up their graduates for even more professional success. Our RNs are now able to go out and be employed by any healthcare employer. Some only hire ACEN accredited from ACEN accredited programs. So we're very excited for what this means for our students. The Associate of Science in Nursing degree takes five years, five semesters to complete. The Cooley Region community honored those who continue to serve their local communities. Police officers and family members gathered in Holman for presentations and to remember the four Wisconsin officers who have died in the line of duty this year. After Officer Katie Lysing's death during a traffic stop just last week, La Crosse County Sheriff John Siegel says the risk officers take is never knowing what lies ahead on the job. You know, our deputies know that every day they put their badge on and every day they go out to serve our community and we don't know what that looks like day to day. Sheriff Siegel says the recent events have slowed recruitment efforts, but the sheriffs continue to try and bring in the best recruits they can. The Second Harvest Food Pantry held a mobile food pantry at Memorial Park in Sparta. The mobile food pantry is held every third month of Monday of the month. The program is here to help families that can't afford food at the grocery store. David Cooter, a second Harvest Food Pantry coordinator, says that the need for their pantry has been slowly increasing. Because there's a lot of families in need of uh, assistance with the food. Prices of food have gone way up, so more people are a little harder to find uh, money around for the food to the prices they are. So the prices, uh, 
have gone up and so have our numbers for people looking for assistance. The mobile pantry had enough food to feed 200 families. Prairie Duchene officials have set a date for a community cleanup for people affected by the Mississippi River flooding. The cleanup will happen tomorrow starting around 930 in the morning. PDC high school students, staff, volunteers and city and county employees will be on hand to help those who have called 211. If you need help cleaning up and want to get on the list, call 211 so officials can get you on a list. And as you head out the door this morning, temperatures are in the 50s under clear skies. We're going to warm up, though, quickly into the mid-60s by 9 a.m., followed by the 70s during the late morning and also the early afternoon. Later this afternoon, between around 3 to 5 especially, that's when our temperatures ramp up into the low 80s with lots of sunshine to go around today. Heading into tomorrow, similar but a little cooler, a high of 72 degrees. Watching for a chance of showers and storms on Thursday as our next system moves in there from the west. A little cloudy for Friday and much cooler with a high of 63. And then a mix of sun and clouds for this weekend with highs back into the 70s, highs in the 70s into early next week as well. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. I'm looking forward to today. Same, me too. <laughs> Can't wait to go out there. <laughs> Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com. We will have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a great morning, everyone, and thank you for watching News 8.